As the Aurora's dawn takes on water, Captain Erickson's final voyage becomes a heart-wrenching battle against time, nature, and his own past. What drives this seasoned mariner to risk everything? Elderly captain refuses to abandon sinking ship. Rescuers burst into tears when they find out why. The sun had barely peeked over the horizon when the Aurora's dawn shuddered violently, jolting Captain William Erickson from his early morning reverie. At 72, he'd weathered countless storms and navigated treacherous waters, but nothing could have prepared him for what was about to unfold on this, his final voyage before retirement. What in the blazes? He muttered, steadying himself against his desk. The ship groaned, a sound that sent chills down his spine. In his bones, he knew this was no ordinary bump. Alarms blared to life, their shrill cries cutting through the dawn's silence. Captain Erickson's decades of experience kicked in as he strode purposefully to the bridge, his weathered face set in grim determination. Report! He barked as he entered, his voice carrying the weight of authority that had earned him respect across the seven seas. First mate Anna Martinez, a sharp officer in her thirties, turned to him with worry etched across her face. Captain, we've struck something on the port side near the bow. It's… it's bad, sir. Erickson's steel-blue eyes narrowed as he assessed the situation. The ship was listing ever so slightly, but enough for a seasoned mariner to notice. Show me, he commanded. As Anna pulled up the damage reports on the screens, Eric's heart sank. The Aurora's dawn, his beloved ship, had suffered a catastrophic breach. Images flashed before him, a gaping wound in the hull, right where it shouldn't be, right where no obstacle should have been. In Uncharted Reef? He wondered aloud, his mind racing through possibilities. Or debris, sir, Anna suggested. There have been reports of containers lost in storms recently. Erickson nodded grimly. Whatever it was, the result was the same. His ship, carrying over 3,000 souls, was in grave danger. Sound the evacuation alarm, he ordered, his voice steady despite the turmoil in his chest. And get me Chief Engineer O'Connor. We need to know how long we have. As Anna relayed the orders, Captain Erickson turned to the window, gazing out at the vast ocean that had been his home for nearly 50 years. The irony wasn't lost on him. His final voyage, meant to be a celebration of an illustrious career, was turning into his greatest challenge. The ship's PA system crackled to life, and Erickson took a deep breath before addressing his passengers and crew. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We've encountered an emergency situation. Please remain calm and follow the crew's instructions for evacuation. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. As chaos erupted throughout the ship, Erickson stood tall, a beacon of calm in the storm. He directed his crew with precision, his voice never wavering, his orders clear and concise. But beneath his composed exterior, a nagging worry gnawed at him, a feeling he couldn't quite place. With nearly 50 years of maritime experience under his belt, he knew every second counted. Begin evacuation procedures immediately, he commanded, his voice carrying the weight of authority that had earned him respect across the seven seas. Despite the chaos, Erickson remained a pillar of calm. He moved through the ship reassuring panicked passengers with a steady hand and a confident voice. Stay calm and follow the crew's instructions, he repeated, his presence alone seeming to quell the rising tide of fear. At 72, William Erickson was a legend in maritime circles. Known for his unwavering dedication to duty and his crew, he had navigated the world's oceans with an impeccable record. This voyage on the Aurora's Dawn, a majestic cruise liner embarking on a transatlantic journey, was to be the crowning jewel of his illustrious career, his final voyage before a well-earned retirement. The Aurora's Dawn wasn't just any ship. For Ericsson, it symbolized the culmination of everything he'd worked for throughout his life at sea. Now, as he directed crew efforts with practiced efficiency, he couldn't help but feel a pang of sorrow for the magnificent vessel. In hindsight, there had been signs subtle hints of the impending trouble that now threatened to overwhelm them. Unusual weather patterns had dogged their journey from the start, and there had been whispers among the crew about minor equipment malfunctions. But such was the crew's faith in their captain that these anomalies had been dismissed, chalked up to the usual quirks of a long voyage. 
As Erickson made his way back to the bridge, these overlooked details weighed heavily on his mind, but there was no time for regrets now. With lives at stake and his beloved ship taking on water, Captain William Erickson steeled himself for the fight ahead, unaware that his greatest challenge was yet to come. Standing on the bridge, overseeing the evacuation, his mind drifted to the past. He remembered his early days at sea, a young officer full of ambition and dreams. The memory of his first command came flooding back. The pride in his eyes, the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. He'd earned every promotion, every accolade, through sheer determination and an unwavering commitment to duty. But that commitment had come at a cost. Captain, Anna's voice cut through his reverie, the portside lifeboats are ready for launch. Erickson nodded, grateful for his first mate's competence. Anna Martinez had been with him for five years now, and he saw in her the future of maritime leadership. Smart, ambitious, and level-headed in a crisis. She reminded him of himself at that age. Good work, Anna, he said. Coordinate with deck officers to ensure orderly boarding. As Anna turned to carry out his orders, Erickson's thoughts drifted once more. This time to a day he'd rather forget, the day of his wife's funeral. Their daughter Lily had been there, her eyes red-rimmed and accusing. You weren't there for her, she'd said. You're never there for anyone but your precious ship. The words had stung then, and they stung now. In the years that followed, Erickson had thrown himself into his work with renewed energy, as if to prove that his sacrifices meant nothing. But with each passing year, the rift between him and Lily had grown wider until it seemed unbridgeable. The ship lurched suddenly, snapping Erickson back to the present. Chief Engineer Malik O'Connor's voice crackled over the intercom. Captain, we've got a problem. Water's rising faster than we can pump it out. We need to speed up the evac. Erickson's jaw tightened. Malik was as steady as they came. If he was worried, the situation was dire indeed. Understood, Chief. Do what you can to buy us time. For a moment, Captain William Erickson felt the weight of command pressing down on him like never before. This was everything he'd feared, everything he'd subconsciously prepared for over years of service. A crisis that wouldn't test just his skills, but his very character. Captain? Anna's voice was tentative, concern evident in her tone. Are you alright? Erickson straightened, pushing down the turmoil threatening to overwhelm him. Yes, Anna, I'm fine. We need to focus on the evacuation. The tension on the bridge was palpable. Anna exchanged worried glances with other crew members. They'd never seen their captain so distracted, so conflicted. Sir, Anna ventured, the Coast Guard has responded to our distress call. They're sending vessels and helicopters. ETA 30 minutes. Erickson nodded, his mind racing through potential scenarios and solutions. Good, Anna. I need you to take charge of coordinating with the Coast Guard when they arrive. Make sure they're fully briefed on our situation. Understood, sir, Anna replied, her posture straightening with the added responsibility. Before they could discuss further, the ship's intercom crackled to life. It was Malik again, his usually calm voice tinged with urgency. Captain, we've got multiple breaches. The ship's listing is increasing. We need to abandon ship, now. The words hung in the air, heavy with finality. Erickson closed his eyes for a moment, the weight of command pressing down on him like never before. When he opened them again, there was a new resolve in his gaze. Anna, get everyone off this ship. That's an order. He turned to leave the bridge. Where are you going, Captain? Anna called after him, confusion and concern warring in her voice. Erickson paused at the door, looking back at his crew, at Anna, who'd become like family to him in these past years. To make sure no one gets left behind, he said firmly. Then, squaring his shoulders, Captain William Erickson stepped out into the chaos of his sinking ship, determined to see this crisis through to the end. As he made his way through the tilting corridors, alarms blaring and water seeping in from unseen cracks, Erickson knew he was facing the greatest test of his long career. The Aurora's Dawn, once a symbol of his life's work, was now a sinking testament to the unpredictability of the sea he devoted his life to. With each step, Erickson felt the weight of his decisions, past and present, bearing down on him. But as the ship groaned around him, he also felt a fierce determination taking hold. He'd spent a lifetime putting duty first. Now, in what could be his final hours at sea, 
He was determined to save every last soul aboard, no matter the cost to himself. The ship's list had increased dramatically, turning once familiar corridors into treacherous slopes. Overhead lights flickered ominously, casting eerie shadows that danced across the walls. This is your captain speaking, Erickson's voice boomed over the intercom. All passengers and crew proceed to your designated evacuation points immediately. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. As if in response to his words, a violent tremor shook the ship. Eric stumbled, catching himself against a wall. The groan of stressed metal filled the air, a haunting sound that every seasoned sailor dreaded. Suddenly, Anna's voice crackled over his personal comm. Captain, we've got a new problem. Fires have broken out on deck C and D. Electrical shorts from the flooding. Eric cursed under his breath. Deploy fire suppression systems and seal off those areas if possible. We can't risk the fire spreading. Understood, sir, Anna replied. As Eric pushed forward, the ship lurched again. He heard a muffled cry coming from behind a nearby door. Frowning, he approached, noticing that the door was jammed shut. Through the small window, he could make out the silhouette of someone trapped inside. Hello, can you hear me? Erickson called out, pressing closer to the door. A voice responded, muffled but unmistakable. Help! I'm trapped! Erickson's heart raced. The voice sounded familiar, but he couldn't quite place it. We hear you. Are you hurt? He called back. I'm okay, but I'm trapped. The voice replied, clearer now. Listen, I need a favor. Can you get the captain? Tell him... There was a pause, then... Tell him his daughter is here. Erickson's blood ran cold. Suddenly, it all clicked into place. Lily? He whispered disbelief coloring his tone. There was a sharp intake of breath from the other side of the debris. Dad? Dad, is that you? The voice was now unmistakable, tinged with a mix of surprise and relief. For a moment, Captain William Erickson stood frozen, the reality of the situation crashing over him like a tidal wave. His daughter, whom he hadn't spoken to in years, was here on his ship, trapped and in danger. The personal and the professional collided with staggering force. Lily, I'm here, he finally managed, his voice hoarse. I'm gonna get you out, just stay calm. As Erickson began to work on the jammed door, his comm unit crackled to life once more. It was Malik, his voice urgent. Captain, we're running out of time. The ship's integrity is compromised beyond repair. We need to abandon ship now. Eric's hand stilled on the door. The conflict had been brewing inside him since the crisis began now reached its boiling point. His duty as captain demanded that he oversee the evacuation, ensure the safety of all passengers and crew. But his heart, long suppressed under years of strict adherence to duty, screamed at him to save his daughter. Captain, do you copy? Malik's voice came again, more insistent. We need to leave now. Erickson closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. When he opened them, there was a new determination in his gaze. Negative, chief. There are still people trapped down here. We don't leave anyone behind. With all due respect, sir, Malik argued, his pragmatism shining through even in crisis. We're risking everyone's lives by staying. The ship could go down any minute. I understand your concern, Malik, Erickson replied, his voice firm, but my decision stands. Continue the evacuation for those who can make it out. I'll handle things down here. There was a pause, then Malik's reluctant acknowledgement. Aye, Captain. Be careful down there. As the communication cut off, Erickson turned back to the door, redoubling his efforts to free his daughter. Lily, I'm still here. I'm gonna get you out, I promise. Dad, I'm scared. Lily's voice came through, vulnerable in a way Erickson hadn't heard since she was a child. I know, sweetheart, he said, surprising himself with the tenderness in his voice. But I'm here now. I'm not leaving without you. As Erickson worked, the ship groaned around him, the list becoming more pronounced with each passing minute. Water continued to rise, now nearly to his knees. The captain knew he was racing against time, but he refused to give up. Every second he spent here was a second not spent overseeing the evacuation, potentially putting other lives at risk. But as he heard his daughter's frightened breathing on the other side of the door, he knew he couldn't leave. Not now, not ever again. With a grunt of effort, Erickson threw his shoulder against the door. It budged slightly, hope flaring in his chest, 
but as he prepared for another attempt, a massive shudder ran through the ship. Alarms blared with renewed urgency, and Erickson could feel the deck tilting even further beneath his feet. The Aurora's dawn was running out of time, and Captain William Erickson found himself caught between the rock of his duty and the hard place of his newfound determination to right the wrongs of his past. As the water rose and the storm closed in, he knew that the decisions he made in the next few minutes would define not just the fate of the ship, but the very essence of who he was as a captain, a father, and a man. The ship groaned ominously as water rushed in, reaching critical levels. Captain Erickson, knee-deep in icy water, continued his desperate attempts to free Lily. Dad, you need to go. Lily's voice trembled. Save yourself. Her words triggered a flash of memory. Lily's fifth birthday, her small hands reaching for him as he left for another long voyage. The pain in her eyes then mirrored the fear in her voice now. No, Erickson growled, redoubling his efforts. I'm not leaving you again. On the bridge, Anna faced an impossible choice. The captain's orders conflicted with her duty to protect the remaining crew. She looked at the anxious faces around her, torn between loyalty and survival. First mate, Malik's voice crackled over the comm. We need to abandon ship now. The captain's not thinking clearly. Anna closed her eyes, the weight of command pressing down on her. When she opened them, there was resolve in her gaze. All hands, she announced, her voice steady despite the turmoil within. Prepare for immediate evacuation. We'll send a team to locate the captain. As the crew scrambled to obey, confusion and concern evident on their faces, Anna silently prayed she was making the right choice. They couldn't understand why their usually level-headed captain was risking everything for one passenger. They had no idea it wasn't just any other person but his daughter. Meanwhile, in the lower deck, Captain Erickson's muscles screamed as he finally wrenched the jam door open. Water rushed in, nearly knocking him off his feet. Through the spray, he saw Lily, pale and shivering, trapped beneath a fallen beam. Lily, he shouted, wading through the chest deep water. Dad, she whispered, her voice weak. You came. As Erickson struggled to free her, the ship groaned ominously. He knew they were out of time. Just then, Lieutenant Reynolds and his Coast Guard team approached the listing Aurora's Dawn. The wind howled and waves crashed against their rescue vessel as they pulled alongside. This is Lieutenant Reynolds, he shouted into his radio. We're commencing rescue operations. Anna's voice crackled back, strained but determined. Lieutenant, the captain is still below deck. He's trying to rescue a trapped passenger. Reynolds frowned. Understood. We'll send a team. On the bridge, Anna made a decision. Malik, you're in charge of the evacuation. I'm going after the captain. Malik's eyes widened. But, no buts, Anna cut him off. He taught me never to leave anyone behind. I won't start now. As Anna led a small team below deck, Erickson finally freed Lily from the debris. She slumped against him, barely conscious. Stay with me, sweetheart, he murmured, hoisting her into his arms. The ship lurched violently. Erickson stumbled, fighting to keep his footing in the rising water. He could feel the Aurora's dawn beginning her final descent. Suddenly, a beam of light cut through the darkness. Captain! Anna's voice rang out. Erickson turned, relief flooding his features, as he saw Anna and two crew members waiting towards them. Sir, we need to go now! Anna shouted, her eyes widening as she recognized the unconscious woman in the captain's arms. Is that? My daughter, Erickson confirmed, his voice thick with emotion. Just then, Lieutenant Reynolds and his team arrived, having fought their way through the sinking ship. We need to evacuate immediately, Reynolds ordered, then paused, taking in the scene before him. The sight of the elderly captain, battered and exhausted, cradling his unconscious daughter struck them all. Tears welled in the eyes of the hardened rescuers and crew members alike, as they understood why he hadn't left the ship yet. Get her out first, Erickson insisted, moving to secure Lily in a rescue harness. Captain, no, Anna protested. You need to come too. The ship groaned again, tilting further. Time was running out. That's an order, Erickson said firmly, his eyes never leaving Lily's face as he fastened the harness. 
Reynolds stepped forward, his voice choked with emotion. Sir, with all due respect, we're not leaving without you. As the rescuers moved to assist both Erickson and Lily, the captain's eyes met Reynolds. In that moment, a silent understanding passed between them, a recognition of the lengths one would go to for family, for duty, for love. Together then, Erickson conceded, allowing Reynolds to secure a harness around him as well. With the ship threatening to capsize at any moment, the rescue team began their perilous ascent, carrying with them not just the captain and his daughter, but a profound lesson in sacrifice and the unbreakable bonds of family. The rescue helicopter's rotors thundered against the howling wind as it lifted away from the sinking Aurora's dawn. Captain Erickson, soaked and exhausted, watched through the open door as his beloved ship slipped beneath the waves. A lifetime of memories disappeared into the churning sea, but the weight of his daughter in his arms reminded him of what truly mattered. Inside the helicopter, medics swarmed around them. One attended to Erickson's cuts and bruises, while the other focused on Lily, who lay switching in and out of consciousness on a stretcher. How is she? Erickson asked, his voice hoarse with worry. A medic looked up, offering a reassuring smile. She's stable, sir. Hypothermic and some minor injuries, but she'll pull through. Erickson nodded, relief washing over him. He reached out, grasping Lily's cold hand in his own. As if sensing his touch, Lily's eyelids fluttered open. She blinked, disoriented, before her gaze settled on her father. Dad? She whispered, her voice barely audible over the helicopter's noise. I'm here, sweetheart, Erickson said, squeezing her hand gently. You're safe now. Lily's eyes welled with tears. You came for me, after all these years, after everything. Erickson's own eyes glistened. I'm so sorry, Lily. I should have been there for you more. I thought I was doing the right thing, providing for you. But I realize now what I really should have been giving you was my time. Lily managed a weak smile. I understand now, Dad. I saw how you led your crew, how much they respect you. I, I'm proud to be your daughter. The captain's composure finally broke. Tears streamed down his weathered face as he leaned in, pressing a kiss to Lily's forehead. I love you, Lily, he murmured. I promise from now on I'll be the father you deserve. As father and daughter embraced, the rescue team watched in silence, moved by the scene before them. Lieutenant Reynolds caught Anna's eye and they shared a knowing look. This rescue had been about more than just saving lives, it had mended a broken family. The helicopter soared through the storm, carrying not just survivors, but a father and daughter who'd found their way back to each other amidst the tempest. As the first rays of dawn broke through the clouds, it seemed to herald not just a new day, but a new beginning for the Ericsons. At the hospital, Lieutenant Reynolds approached Erickson, a look of deep respect on his face. Captain, your crew wanted you to know. They're all accounted for, no casualties. Erickson's shoulders sagged with relief. Thank you, Lieutenant, for everything. As he stepped through the hospital doors, Erickson knew that while the sea would always call to him, his true north would forever be the love of his family, both blood and chosen. In the end, the greatest rescue of Captain Erickson's career wasn't from the tempestuous sea, but from the stormy waters of his own heart. And in that rescue, he not only saved his daughter, but it also rediscovered the true meaning of leadership, family, and redemption. What would you risk everything for? Have you ever had to choose between duty and family? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more incredible true stories of courage and redemption.